Erling Haaland is still the best player in this game. Oh, and he's this week's best captaincy option too. Welcome to the Gianni Batici YouTube show. Hope you guys are well. It's the international break. We've had a week off. Well, now it's time to get back into FPL mode and preview game week nine. We're talking captaincy, teams to target, a bit on chip strategy and obviously captaincy too. If you fancy hitting that like button nice and early, that'd be amazing, guys. Thank you for your support. But first, how about a little round up of the action so far in the international break. Well, first and foremost, Robertson came off injured for Scotland in game one, didn't he? Does that make Simakas an FPL option? It absolutely does. Let's wait for Klopp's press conference to find out how long Robertson is out for. The South American players, we've always got an eye on them. Well, the bad news is they got a ton of minutes. Yeah, the Liverpool lads, the Man City lads, and they're playing in the 12.30 kickoff Liverpool and the 3 p.m. kickoff Man City. I wonder how many many will be rested. Maybe we'll get some team leaks. Uh, Ollie Watkins scored this international break. That's useful for his owners. Oh, and Erling Haaland, yeah, he still uh, bagged the brace against Cyprus too. Tenali's going to be suspended for a while, isn't he? How will that affect Newcastle? And is Elliot Anderson a 4.4 million enabler maybe for those on wildcard? Oh, and what about the United lads? Because Rashford, Bruno and Hoyland are all looking sharp and scoring goals for their, their, their countries. Will they start scoring for their club or they've got the best fixture on paper this week. Now, for, for ages, I've been saying, sell your Man United players. Get rid of them. I'm fed up of hearing one more week. Well, right now I'm about to say, give them one more week. And that's purely because I think on paper, this is as good a fixture as they could wish for. Now, as many would say, no, Johnny, it would be a home fixture on paper. I don't know if it would be. I think an away fixture at the moment is good for Man United because, look, they nearly got booed off the pitch against Brentford. In fact, at half time they did. And if they'd lost to Brentford, they would have been booed off the pitch. Now, McTominay rescued them late. But I think the pressure of playing in front of 75,000 at Old Trafford versus actually playing away might be good for Man United. Oh, and what's the best away fixture at the moment? Sheffield United. Who's got the worst defence in the league? Sheffield United. Who concedes the most chances in the league? Sheffield United. Now, Bruno looked great for Portugal. He's playing at a central right in an attacking role. Rashford looked really good against Italy. I was there. That was a bit of a, a bad night. Um, and Hoyland, well, we know how good he's been already at Man United, but again, still scoring goals for Denmark, although he got a bit of some 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 tough treatment from the, the Malta defenders, but he's fit and firing and ready to go. And he's shown so many good signs already, Hoyland. We haven't seen Premier League goals are plenty, but I'm, I'm sure we're going to. We've seen him scoring elsewhere. Um, so I really like the Man United assets this week. And actually, if you're going for a one-week punt, I might be going for a one-week punt. I own Darwin. I own Saka. I could go Saka to Bruno. I could go Darwin to Hoyland. And that's if I don't think these guys are going to start. I'm going to make that call late and tune in to my team selection video on Friday. So Man United, we like. that. That the that teams like we appreciate this week for a good fixture. But in terms of long term, right, we've got Aston Villa. Um, the fixtures are brilliant. Really good, aren't they? Um now, Ollie Watkins, since Unai Emery has been at the club, we talk a lot on this channel about expected goal involvement. Only two players have more goal contributions than Ollie Watkins since Emery's been manager of Aston Villa. Now, no surprises there. Haaland's had 36, Salah's had 34, Watkins has had 31, right? That's more than Saka at 24 and Odegaard at 23 and Rashford at 22. This guy, I don't like using the term essential or must-have, Ollie Watkins, I think, maybe not from game week nine, because I think the West Ham game is tricky, but certainly from game week 10, and that's when I'll be jumping on on a wild card. I think Ollie Watkins is must have or essential. Uh, sorry to say, he's not even on pens. <laughs> he, st he still is. Um, and he's more expensive than last season, but yeah, clearly the main man. So we like Villa. Matty Cash, we know what we're getting. Tons of attacking threat, more than any other defender. I also think Luca Dean for a few weeks could be a load of fun because Moreno still hasn't returned in the Premier League and when he does, he'll be drip-fed in. I think Emi Martinez, a 4.9 million keeper, is worth monitoring and obviously DRB we like, but he isn't showing the same form he did early on in his Villa career, um, earlier on this season. So we like Aston Villa. Three more other teams I want to give a shout-out to to target. Liverpool. Mo Salah, obviously, but... Should he get the minutes, Darwin? 
Is Trent a nice differential shout? I think he'll become it. And I actually think the Liverpool defence is perhaps a little bit better than we've been given them credit for recently. So eyes on Liverpool, of course. We would just love a Diogo Jota to be a starter, for example. But Luis Diaz is, and he looks sharp. But again, the South American lads this week, maybe we swerve because they're in the early kickoff. Okay, Arsenal. There wasn't much at all that split Martinelli, Odegaard and Saka last season. But this season, they are split massively by price. Saka's fallen to 8.5, which is the same as Odegaard. They're both good value at 8.5. Martinelli's 7.7. I think for those that where budget is tight and budget's always going to be tight, especially for those on wildcard in 10, like me, Martinelli might be the route to that Arsenal attack. But when we look at their fixtures, look at the home fixtures in game week 10 and game week 12, I don't think one Arsenal player is enough. I'm going to have, I think on wildcard, an Arsenal defender, an Arsenal attacker, and possibly even a third Arsenal player in there as well. Maybe it's Martinelli and Saka. Um, and then Brighton from game week 10. Now, sure, we know about the rotation there. And we don't like Brighton defenders because they are loose at the back. But Brighton attack. Underlying to there. Game week 10, the fixture runs amazing. And everyone sold their Brighton players. So again, some nice differential picks. Obviously Matoma. But I wonder if João Pedro is on pens. And I know he's not going to start every game. If you can pick and choose the games he does, he's 5.3 million. So I like João Pedro too. Guys, got to give a shout out to today's sponsor, haven't we? Thank you to So Rare for sponsoring today's stream. I know loads of you have started playing So Rare off the back of seeing them sponsor these game week uh, preview videos. If you have no idea what So Rare is, check out the link in my description. Um, there's loads of cool uh, elements to the game. It's a little bit more complex uh, to FPL. But if you like FPL, when you like the intricacies of the scoring system of, say, the bonus point system, well, So Rare rewards all of those things. Loads of people make a lot of money playing too but you can play for free and I'd advise you do that uh, first and foremost so let's move on and talk a little bit about captaincy but first let's see my team and where I'm at the look of my team I'm happy with it but I still think I need a wild card in 10 because we've just addressed four teams right I want to go big on those four teams Aston Villa I've got none Liverpool I've only got Darwin I need Salah probably don't need Darwin Arsenal I've got Saka only. I want more. Oh, and Brighton, I've got Matoma. But again, I don't know if I want to use that midfield spot on Matoma or maybe go for a, one of the Brighton forwards for less and just play him in selected weeks. So for those four alone, but mainly for Watkins, for Cash, and for Mo Salah, I think I need to wildcard. I could make those moves with like minus eight, but at this point in the season, I don't want to be taking minus eights. Um, and I think that's when I'll be wildcarding game week 10. Stay tuned next week because it'll be a wild card heavy uh, content throughout the week for sure and I have already been making drafts but again I don't want to commit too early because I know there'll be something that happens this week whether it's the form of a player we didn't know someone taking penalties that we are unaware of like Cole Palmer last week a big injury a suspension a big win from a mediocre team and they'll catch our attention um, so that's where I'm at but captaincy this week is a big debate because Haaland's been blanking and when Haaland blanks in consecutive weeks, we get a little bit twitchy, right? And he's not he's not been great for the last, what, month in, in FPL? Um, you combine that with Salah having a home fixture against Everton and Son having a home fixture against Fulham and you go, oh, even the United lads against Sheffield United, there's loads of options. So what I've been doing uh, on this show and this particular video is looking at captaincy against said opponent and uh, in, in history in that fixture so for example how does Haaland perform when he plays Brighton how does Salah perform when he plays Everton right so let's have a look at some of these numbers from only FPL thank you for sharing them with me each week on on DM first and foremost Foden has an average score of 9.5 points in the last four games he's played Brighton he's clocked a 10 a 1 a 9 and an 8 Haaland Averages at nine as well. He's only played Brighton twice, but a five and a 13. So again, straight away, Man City do well against Brighton. Whether it's Potter or De Zerbi, Brighton play only one way. They all have a go. And when teams have a go against Man City, especially at the Etihad, they get punished. Um, and I expect Haaland and Foden and Alvarez, if he starts, to score big this weekend. I think it's a really nice fixture. I think there's goals for both teams, actually. I think City concede. 
Who else is really high? Well, Rashford's a bit of a bully. Can be against newly promoted teams. Nine point average against Sheffield United. He's had an 11 and nine, a 14 and a two. His last four against Sheffield United, he's only blanked once with a two. Um, Salah's great against Everton. You guys will picture some memories of Salah versus Everton. 8.75 average. Like, he's had an 11 and a 15 in there. Madison against Fulham as well. Now, this was for Leicester. He's got a seven-point average. What's interesting is Son um, only has a three-point average. Yeah, against Fulham. Kane did all right against Fulham, but Son only a three-point average. So, what do I look into this? Well... Do I make my captain picks based on form against that opponent six months or a year or two years ago? Probably not. Do I like it as a measure and a gauge? Yeah, I do. I like to know that Man City often outplay Brighton and score loads of goals against them. I like to know that in the Merseyside derby, Salah often steps up, right? I like to know that Son hasn't done well against Fulham. Um, but I have to also take into account the fixture now and the form now. And Son is still a really credible option this week. So if I'm going to give you my top three picks this week, I'm actually going to say at number three, Mo Salah. Um, and that's purely because it's the early kickoff. And Liverpool historically struggle in the early kickoff, especially because they have heavily reliance on South American players. And the likes of Alisson and Darwin, and in years gone by, Fabinho and now Luis Diaz, Either Klopp leaves them out and they struggle, or it's a lack of preparation. So I don't love this fixture for Liverpool, despite them having a good record against Everton. I also think Everton, by the way, better than we think. Their numbers are better in attack and their numbers are better in defence than we think. And I think this could be a little bit cagier than we're perhaps giving it credit for. So Salah's a good option, of course he is, because he's missed a consistency this year and he's added loads of assists. So at number three, Mo Salah would be the best captaincy option this week for me. But at number two, and this is a tight race for me, is Hyun Min Son. I know he's not done well against Fulham, but this season, good Lord, Fulham are bad defensively. Son playing number nine. The only reason I'm not, one of the only reasons I'm not going to go Son this week, is the 90-minute appeal. Yes, he scored and got a goal for South Korea the other day. But again, he's came off wincing at half-time. He's been carrying an injury for some time. And when you look at the last five Premier League games, Son hasn't played 90. He's not even playing 80 or 85. He's playing 75, right? And with that in mind, Postacoglu is bringing him off at 75 minutes every single time, and he's missing out. He's not just missing out on 15 minutes. He's sometimes missing out on 20, 25, because football games now in the Premier League are 95 to 100 minutes. So you get like Madison's 100 minutes versus... Son's 75, you know, Haaland's, seven, Haaland's 100 minutes versus Son's 75. And you go, oh, for captaincy, I want a 90-minute man. Now, Haaland is playing 90 at the minute. Um, and Pep needs him scoring again for Man City against Brighton, the standout option. Last season, a five-pointer and a 13-pointer. I'll be going Haaland captain this week and some will be my vice. They're my top three picks. Let me know in the comments. There'll be loads betting against Haaland. I completely understand if you want to go Salah or want to go Son, they're really good picks. And I think it's fun when people do that and I encourage that. But this week for me, you just I'm backing the guy I think is getting the most points as I always do. And I think Haaland versus Brighton is a really nice matchup. Uh, therefore, that's where I'll be going for my captaincy this week. Do let me know in the comments who you're captaining. And guys, have you seen that I've got um, members now, like YouTube members? I don't know if you've, you you know about this, but if you click join, or there's a link in the description to join on this video, you'll see I've got two membership tiers. One is uh, squad members, where for two ninety nine a month, uh, you get all the priority comments. So if you comment on my, my videos, you're guaranteed a thorough response uh, ASAP. I'll be getting back to you on transfer plans or whatever you want to ask about. If you want to go one level above that and join the ultras tier, you can join our WhatsApp group. Now in the WhatsApp group, it's, I was going to say daily contact. It's hourly contact a lot of the time. Voice notes, videos, the lot. Uh, I'm in there, obviously. Uh, winner of FPL last year, friend of the show, Ali Yahangarov, is in the group as well. Come and join that community if you want to join the WhatsApp group. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your likes and subscribes. I'll see you very soon for the team selection video. Take care, go well, and enjoy the rest of your